Turning off the activity, ready, steady, go. But I, I don't think I normally say it, but perhaps I do. There are a lot of things we're unconscious of, aren't there? Yeah. Until you see them yeah. on the screen. I just, I think you introduced it in a really nice way, really relaxing. They're, they will feel very, or well, they'll look very relaxed now. What, what, what was it she did that made... Well, the modelling, I thought, that by doing it and demonstrating it, but also you personalised it by talking about what you liked and referring back to yesterday. We're going to do now, um, we're going to do about a, a five-minute speaking activity and then we'll finish for the day. Um, and I just wanted, if you could look on the board, I've got this problem sometimes, is that I forget, um, I've got a, this illness that when I write, I forget my vowels and I, I need you to, I know, it's terrible, I've been, and you've got to, you've got to help me with this, so just <laughs> have a look this at this. Before. Um, I mean, I'd done this before. Maybe not every student, but some of them knew it. And they quite like it. I got it's better a for a second. <laughs> you got better for a second. <laughs> I love that. I, <laughs> I really do have problems. Yeah, it's terrible. So this is a kind of way that you, you often use just to sort of get things off the ground. I don't know where it came. I may have seen it somewhere, but I th it came the, the to my mind about six months ago, mm. and I just oh, did sorry, it one day in a, class, just for fun, because I was writing something up on the board which was a bit boring. And it's absolutely brilliant, because people get into it. And and so the whole point of it is just at the beginning of an activity, yes. you just want to get... Well, it's something boring, which they might, like an es a, a essay title, which they might find dry. It brings it to life. What interested me about those two clips is the two apparently very different styles of teacher. So my question, I think, is, is it because you're very different kind of teachers, or would you both change if... For example, you taught at the advanced level, would you be a bit more like Philip? And if you were teaching at the lower level, would you be a bit more like Pip? Yes, I think, I think we would change yeah. a lot. Um, I wouldn't have to um, perhaps give them a model at advanced level. They would know what to do. Part of the model was getting them to um, return the question with, what about you, how about you? Um, whereas an advanced class would already know how to do that. If you did what you did with your class with mine, if I modelled uh, some questions and I got them to, to, to do it, they'd probably think... Oh, it's patronising. Yes, the, the, yeah. they, they, you, yeah. they might have come to the, to the wrong level or something, or they think, we don't need this, this is a waste of time. Yeah. So... Having said that, um, if, if, the, if the topic is an easier topic with yes. lower levels, yes. I would, I'd be happy to just let yes. them sort of ask their own yes, questions. Exactly. And, but the topic, you know, it's quite specific, talking about reading. Not all of them read, mm, you know, so mm. I tried to, you know, choose yeah, some questions yes. which would, which would um, involve them mm, all as well. Mm. So um, the topic was quite... Mm. Um, I'm, excuse me. Yeah. I'm, I'm also interested in whether, in whether the, it's true that the higher you go in level, in terms of level, the more authentic or the less prescriptive you, you have to be or you need to be. In other words... In a, in a very high level, you can just say, oh, talk about this. Whereas if you do that with, a, let's say, an intermediate or a pre-intermediate level, they might be lost because they don't have the confidence or the language to do it. So when you were both sort of thinking about these classes, I think what I'm hearing is that you quite deliberately sat down and thought, the way to do this, I must do this. It wasn't a sort of in-class decision. It was something no, you planned no, out quite definitely. Definitely, definitely planned to do that and had the questions ready for them there to to um, to use. And um, in my experience as well, um, with lower levels, if you don't give them a demonstration or a model, they can just end up giving one-word answers, and um, and it's it's not nearly as effective as if as if you do. Mm. So. Um, Whereas when you were thinking about it? I was thinking that I knew that... I, I think confidence is a, is a good word because I think what Pip... I, I hope I can speak for you, but what Pip was doing was maybe giving them confidence to go into the discussion, whereas with me, I was, conf I was confident in their confidence. So Because you knew this class quite because well. Because I knew the class... Exactly, I knew the class quite well.
Now, um, we're going to be talking about food and cooking today. So, to warm up, I'm going to point to you in turn, okay? And I just want you to mention the name of a food. So, for example, I might point to Jin Wan and he'll say, orange. Uh, easy? Okay, I'm going to point to Anna. She'll say, chicken. Okay? You've got three seconds. If you don't say the name of a food in three seconds, I'm afraid you're out of the game. But don't worry, it won't change your life. <laughs> right, so we're going to continue with academic writing today. Now, we've looked at understanding the task, at brainstorming for ideas, structuring those ideas, and linking them into paragraphs. Today, we're going to look at actually noting them down in an academic style. So we're going to be looking at the grammar and style for academic writing today. Okay? We're going to start off with vocabulary, particularly in our phrasal verbs. We're going to be looking at phrasal verbs. OK, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, how are you? Hi. Good. I'm going to show you a, a picture. Tell me, it's some writing. Tell me what it is. Could you tell me what it is? Um, what kind of writing? It's a letter, absolutely, it's a letter. Okay. okay, I'm going to show you another piece of writing. Could you tell me what this is? Today we're going to look at um, ways of improving our writing. Um, and we're going to look at lots of examples of texts and how we can organise text better. Um, and hopefully that will help you with all types of your writing. Um, before we start, with a partner, could you make a note of what makes a good piece of writing? Try and think of some aspects. For example, um, grammatical accuracy is important. Can you think of some other things that are important when you're writing? What's a teacher looking for when he's marking a piece of work? We're going to start off with vocabulary, particularly in our phrasal verbs. We're going to be looking at phrasal verbs. OK, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, how are you? Hi. Good. I'm going to show you a, a picture. Tell me. It's some What's your reaction to the various clips we've seen of the different ways teachers start their lessons? It wasn't actually a great surprise. I think there are uh, a few sort of standard ways of introducing a lesson. You can um, express your sort of intentions for that lesson, your goals for that lesson, uh, which, um, as I remember, most of the other teachers did, uh, perhaps not in quite as much detail as I did with summary of previous lessons. Um, another way that I remember... Uh, one of the teachers, Louise, uh, starting a lesson was with a game, with a bit of a warmer, which, again, I like to do quite frequently um, to put students in a good mood and a, a sort of frame of mind that is um, good for, for learning. In the clip of you teaching, you started with quite a detailed explanation of what the students were going to be doing in the lesson. Why did you decide to do it like that? I did that in that lesson because it was a very focused course. It was a grammar and writing course, and we had um, some very clear goals for a number of weeks of focusing on academic writing, and I divided the skill of academic writing into several sub-skills, which we uh, covered. We covered one sub-skill uh, each week and then built from that, developed that. And I think it's important for, for students to know uh, what they're doing in the, this next lesson and how that fits in with the whole picture. But I gather from what you've said so far that in, in other lessons you might start in a completely different way. Very different way. Um, some lessons I won't actually announce what we're going to do in that lesson at all. I might leave a bit of suspense. If I'm doing more of a skills lesson, so concentrating more on reading, speaking, listening, um, I might focus more on the topic, try and engage the students in the topic. And in that way, you can all... You can lighten the, the mood of the lesson, make it less academic, so they can almost forget perhaps that they're studying English and get absorbed by the, the subject. Uh, for example, in a lesson I've, I've been teaching this week, uh, we did some work with um, a video of the beach using also the book of the beach. And 
to start the lesson, I sat them down and I, I told them I was going to read part of a text and I was going to describe um, a scene. And I wanted them, as I was reading, to close their eyes and allow uh, a picture to be conjured up in their mind. And when I'd finished reading it, I wanted them to draw that picture onto a piece of paper. Um, so they didn't have a clue what we were going to be studying, what the topic was going to be. But they did that, they enjoyed it, and they, they drew their beach, and we, we then read the text in more detail afterwards, and they judged their pictures to decide whose was, was most accurate. And that's when they said, is this from um, the film The Beach? I said, well, it kind of is. Another student said, it's from the, the book of The Beach. I said, yes, that's right. Then we went on to read the same section of the, sorry, to watch the same section of the, the video to do a bit more reading from the book. And I, I didn't announce to them what we were going to do at all. And they got into the theme. And, and as a result, they were sort of very engaged by the time they actually came to do the reading and stuff like that. That's it. And I think if they are engaged in the actual topic, um, when they're not focusing on what they need to learn, trying to think about rules and things like that, then they absorb things very well, very naturally. Uh, how carefully do you, do you plan how you start lessons? I mean, do you think about it very carefully, or is it something that sort of comes naturally, as it were, because you're exp an experienced teacher? These days, as you say, I think it, become, it comes more naturally. I'm sure when I started out, I put a lot of planning into every stage of the lesson. But I tend to, I think, at every stage of a the lesson these days, adapt to the situation, walk into... Um, a classroom and almost s sense uh, what, what the mood is in there and react to it. And obviously it comes with the, uh, the activity that we're going to start off with. And as I said, this, the goal for the lesson, whether you're focusing on language or skills, um, it comes naturally with those decisions. Okay, clear the table. Good. Okay, now here is a pile of words. All right? What I want you to do is spread the words out face up all over the table. Not in rows, just all over the table like this. Okay? Yes, that's right. Spread them all over. Good. Okay. Can you all put your hands on your knees? And now on your head. No, I'm joking. Just on your knees. Okay. Now, I'm going to read these words out. Okay? As I read each word, you have to grab it. All right? Just grab it. And you have to grab it before the rest of the people in your group. So don't be polite, okay? I'm going to read a word. You snatch it. Don't let other people snatch it, but don't fight, okay? So don't be polite, but don't be violent either. Okay, hands on knees. The first word... Are you ready? Is recipe. Recipe. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you do me a favour, actually? If you snatch the word, can you hold it up in the air and say, got it? Got it. Okay. <laughs> Rare. <laughs> okay. Dish. What? Dish. 
If you get it, keep it. If you get it, keep it. Okay. Oven. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> yes, hands on knees, because some people have long arms. Sweet. Bake. Cook. Mm. <laughs> if you've got any cookers left, right? Okay. Beef. No, you. <laughs> not so violent over there. Be careful. This is the dangerous one. <laughs> Chop. <laughs> okay. Right. So everybody gets the last one. Um, right. What I want you to do. Well, count up how many you've got first, and we'll find out who the fastest yeah, reader and snatcher is. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nine, wow. <laughs> Eight or nine? <laughs> Who, how many? Eleven, eleven. Eleven, eleven, so you both won. Well done. Okay, a new one with eight. Oh, nine. Fourteen. Huh? Fourteen. Hannah, ah, no, well done. Fourteen. Eight. Ten. Four. Eleven, okay. So well done, Hannah, with fourteen there. Okay, guys, so we've been doing education all of this week, lots of vocabulary. So this afternoon, we're just going to have a quick vocab quiz before we start to wake you up after lunch and then use the vocabulary, lots of listening and speaking. Okay, so we have two teams, team one and team two. And if I can have one volunteer from team one here. And Soledad, can you be the volunteer? If you can just move your chair a little bit. Back. That's well, fine. <laughs> Thank you, Hyung Bum. Okay. So, Soledad and Hyung Bum, don't look. I'm going to write a word, and your team will explain the word to you. It's an education word. <coughs> okay? And the first person I hear can have one point. So, no cheating, no looking. Okay. Okay, go. It's a school for everybody. Not, 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 not public. Public. No, no, no. Oh, well done, Sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay, and change. Different person. Different person. Swap over. Ready? Oh, better change that. When you cheating? Uh, okay, go. An intensive course. Very intensive course. Crash course? Yeah. Very good. Very <laughs> quick over here. Okay. okay, next person. Swap over. Make sure you're not looking. I trust you. Ready? Okay, go. Not a student, no. but a uh, small no. lecturer. No. Okay, one more last chance, guys. You're just not quite quick enough. Ready? Okay, go. Uh, this is uh, big thumbs, and then you're 16 years old when you're... G-S-C-S-E. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you both points. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, thank you. You can sit, you can sit back down. Everyone's awake. Where did you get this game from? Okay, go. Someone showed it to me in Brazil, actually, in my first teaching job. It's a terrific game, isn't it? It's really... Um... <laughs> it's great because it kind of works with all levels yeah, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. grammar, vocabulary. What was your reaction to watching those games clips? 
it was a really good reminder of sort of how much fun games are in class and how much students generally, as a rule, enjoy doing them. Why did you use a, a game in your lesson and what was it for? What stage of the lesson did it occur in? This was right at the beginning of the lesson, so it served as a, as a warmer to energise the students after, after lunchtime. And also I wanted to recycle some of the vocabulary they'd been looking at and learning all week um, to prepare them for the listening and the reading activity that followed. Do you use games a lot? Um, I probably do use games quite a lot to, to recycle vocabulary or to introduce a topic or maybe as a, as a diagnostic activity to see sort of exactly how much vocabulary students know about a particular topic. What are the sort of key characteristics of a good game then? Um, I think an element of competition um, to kind of motivate them to, to take part. Um, they love team games because obviously they're not put on the spot and asked to kind of produce things individually. Um, so an element of competition, um, teams and I guess sort of fast paced activities. This is a very unfair question, but do you have a favourite game? One that you like more than the others? I have to say the backs to the backs to the board is probably one of my favourite games because it's so simple and you can use it for all levels of students. Um, I mean this was a proficiency group but it can be used with beginners, it can be used with sort of single lexical items or whole sentences. So it can be used for grammar, grammatical um, forms as well so that probably probably is my favorite my name's philippa titley uh, but most people call me pip um, i've been teaching english for about 10 years um, I taught in China for a year and I taught in Spain for a year and um, ever since then I've been teaching English here in the UK. I'm Philip. I've been a teacher for 20 years. I've taught in London and also in Paris and at the moment I teach mostly high levels, particularly the proficiency exam. My name's Louise and I've been teaching for about six years now. Um, I started working in Brazil and I've since worked in Colombia and in Mexico. And at the moment I'm working in Wimbledon at a language school and also at College of Further Education teaching a combination of general English and some exam courses. My name's Mark. I've been teaching for six years. Um, I started teaching because I wanted to live in Barcelona for a year, having been on holiday there. Uh, so I trained to be a teacher in Barcelona, taught there for a year, came back to London, uh, got a job teaching and just kept on doing it because I started to enjoy it. Um, I haven't looked back since and I haven't worked anywhere else since either. Hi, I'm Pip. I've been teaching English for about nine years now. I started out teaching in Milan in Italy, teaching business people. Then I moved back to London and taught in a private language school for two years before going abroad again to Belize uh, where I taught in a primary school in a Spanish-speaking area and I've been back in England teaching for about five years now. Hi, my name's uh, Chris McDermott. I've been uh, teaching English now for just over eight years. I uh, started my teaching uh, career in this country uh, before moving to uh, moving abroad. Um, I taught for a year in Italy, a year in Spain, uh, before coming back to England. Um, and I've been working in London for about three years now. 
Um, currently working at Wimbledon School of English, where I've been for about 18 months. Thank <laughs> you.